In this simulation, we get to experiment with different inflation pressures for truck tires. If a tire is underinflated or overinflated, the driver might be in danger, so it's important to think carefully about how much air is in each tire. The animation here, of course, only hints at what is actually happening inside the car tires. At ordinary temperatures, there are uncountable numbers of air molecules traveling at very high speeds. The vehicle shown here has a mass of 750 kilograms. The weight of such a vehicle is about 7,500 newtons, since the strength of the gravitational field on Earth is roughly 10 newtons per kilogram. The tire must support 7,500 newtons. Assuming each tire supports the same amount of weight, each tire must support roughly 1,850 newtons. Let's have a look at the graph at the top. The vertical axis represents the gauge pressure in the tire. The gauge pressure is the amount of pressure in the tire above atmospheric pressure. Since the gauge pressure reads one atmosphere, this means the actual pressure in the tire is two atmospheres. The gauge pressure is what supports the vehicle. One atmosphere equals approximately 100 kilopascals, or 100,000 pascals. A pascal is a newton per square meter. Because 100,000 newtons per square meter is much larger than the 1,850 newtons we need to support the tire, we need much less than a square meter of contact area to support the vehicle. On the horizontal axis is the contact area between the tire and the ground. The more pressure in the tire, the smaller the contact area required, since the product of pressure and contact area is force. Here, we see the contact area is 185 square centimeters, which is 0.0185 square meters. The product of 100,000 newtons per square meter and 0.0185 square meters is the area bounded by the graph. This is the net downward force exerted by tire on its contact area with the ground. Due to Newton's third law, this is also the net upward force exerted on the tire. This is the force that supports this quarter of the vehicle's weight. What actually provides the force? As each molecule collides with the inner walls of the tire, it bounces off, changing momentum. Such a bounce requires a force. The molecule feels a force, and the tire feels its third law pair. What allows gas pressure to exert a force is really all the little collisions between each of the molecules and the walls of the container. Clearly, to support a real vehicle, we'd need lots more molecules than are shown here. And they'd have to be going much faster. But what we have here is perhaps easier to visualize. If you increase the number of tires, each tire has to support less of the weight overall. This means at a given gauge pressure, smaller surface area is required. Likewise, if we increase the gauge pressure in each tire, smaller surface area is required to provide the same force. If you select a heavier vehicle at a given gauge pressure, larger surface area is required. A tire that is properly inflated for a light vehicle would be underinflated for a heavier vehicle. For this reason, we must increase the gauge pressure to keep the tire properly inflated. There's a really great experiment you can do with your own car at home with the help of your parents or at school with the help of your teacher. With the car parked in a safe place, measure the area of contact between the wheels and the ground. Use a car tire pressure gauge to measure the gauge pressure in the wheels. Do all the required unit conversions to measure the amount of force supporting the weight of the car. Now you know how much your car weighs.